Is that clock right? No, that's impossible. I just woke up. Are you mad? Hello and welcome to CBR. My name is Steven, or Mark. You know what, just call me Khonshu's Fist. Moon Knight has officially made his MCU debut, and what a splash he has made. Steven, what the hell are we wearing? For all devoted comic nerds, this comes as no surprise. But for a wider audience, Oscar Isaac has introduced them to their new favorite hero. So it's time to hone up on some Moon Knight knowledge. And the most important question is, what does he use to beat guys up? Besides his fists, of course. Let's check out Moon Knight's most powerful weapons right now. This is real. I'm real. No, no you're not real. You're yes. Not real. The deeper you dig into the character that is Moon Knight, the more you realize that he's basically just Batman with a slight personality disorder. He's rich, has a mansion, and a secret identity. His vast fortune left to him by his parents helps fund his crime fighting. He has purchased some very high-tech gadgets and uses them to put the beat down on some bad guys. However, unlike Batman, Moon Knight was chosen by the gods to be a hero. Because of this, many of his weapons were gifted to him by Khonshu himself. One of these weapons, the first on our list, was a pair of bolas. Bolas are ancient weapons, mainly used for hunting animals. They are two balls tied together by a string that would be thrown at the legs of animals and tangle them, forcing them to fall. Obviously, Moon Knight makes great use of these from bad guys who try to run away. But at the end of the day, tripping some supernatural villains will likely just tick them off more. Likely coming from his CIA days, Mark Spector has frequently used a device that administers an electric charge to those he chooses to use it against. It's essentially a stun gun wielded by an arguably crazy person in a slick white suit. It works very well at stopping enemies dead in their tracks and immobilizing them for a time, allowing Moon Knight to catch up and proceed to punch them. A lot. Like, as far as weapons go, Moon Knight having a stun gun sounds rather peaceful, but trust me, it's just stalling until he pulls out the big guns. One of Moon Knight's go-to weapons when fighting crime surprisingly is his handy nunchucks. Moon Knight is a master of several different styles of martial arts, and many of them utilize nunchucks in their fighting style. Even though they are not his strongest weapon, he really puts them to good use. He has chosen to use them to fight some of his strongest enemies including Shadow Knight and the Zodiac Cult. Moon Knight has knocked victims out cold thanks to two wooden batons linked together by a chain which is a real undersell to a reliable weapon that in the hands of a master can do some serious damage. I'm not sure if he should choose them when he starts fighting evil Egyptian gods, but for right now, I'm sure he could have beat that werewolf thing at the end of the first episode no problem. Taking after great MCU heroes of old and new, Moon Knight comes strapped with a bow and arrows. He's quite proficient in them. That's what growing up in a rich family with nothing to do but practice in the backyard will do for you. Now, Moon Knight will likely never be thought of as a master archer, but more so just a master of all types of weaponry. He has also been seen using a crossbow from time to time, and while he's taken arrows to the chest just as much as he has given them, I think based on how infrequently he uses it, it's likely not his best. There are some versions of Moon Knight in the comics where his bow and arrows come directly from Hawkeye himself, which if you're going to get a gift from someone, that's like getting a computer from Steve Jobs. Thanks to Moon Knight's CIA and Marine training, he is well versed in weapons used by those in the espionage field. One unique one that Moon Knight likes to use from time to time is his blowgun. This is basically what happens when the kid who constantly gets sent to the office for shooting spitballs grows up. Moon Knight is extremely precise with this weapon, and often it allows him to incapacitate or even kill enemies in the dead of night without even being noticed. Then of course, sometimes he uses it to do the opposite. Moon Knight has normal darts he uses, but also is equipped with gas darts to knock multiple people unconscious, and explosive darts, you know, to knock multiple people unconscious permanently. When your debut is against a furry creature brought forth by the full moon, you had better stock up on some silver weapons. Many of Moon Knight's weapons are made of the precious metal, and it doesn't just work on werewolves. You try robbing a bank and then taking a fistful of silver from a vigilante with a personality disorder. One of Moon Knight's go-tos is his silver armbands, used in his very first appearance to fight Werewolf by Night. These armbands extend up to Moon Knight's knuckles, and feature large spikes jutting out from each one. Needless to say, Moon Knight's punches are less like Hawkeye and more like Wolverine. For those of you less familiar with Mark Spector beyond the Disney Plus show, you'll come to find out that he really is no stranger to violence, hence the murderous silver boxing gloves he wears crime fighting. These are enough just to scare off most low-level criminals before they even commit crimes. The Egyptian gods that chose Mark Spector to be their Moon Knight clearly wanted him to be readily available to rip someone's face off in an instant if he needed to. 
Packed in his totally not at all like Batman utility belt is some razor sharp circular blades used for longer range attacks. Trying to run from Moon Knight in the old days surely meant you would wind up with one of these in your back. These blades are a little over the top in how grotesque they can be, which is why Moon Knight eventually upgraded to a more sophisticated set of projectile weapons. It's a good thing too because when he was wielding these he may as well have been trapping people in murder machines asking if they want to play a game. It's true, the blades were all well and good, but you can't be a night stalking crime fighting vigilante without some kind of calling card. Moon Knight eventually upgraded to crescent shaped darts. You know, cause of the whole moon motif. These were much more aerodynamic and much like Batman's batarangs, not only did they cause physical pain, but they struck fear into the hearts of anyone who saw them. The gods also gifted Moon Knight some things to throw as well. In his arsenal are traditional throwing irons. These are basically handleless knives that when mastered correctly can become extremely dangerous devices. For reference, Archangel's wings in X-Men Apocalypse, featuring another one of Stephen Grant's personalities played by Oscar Isaac, were made entirely out of these throwing irons. Basically, these weapons in the hands of any accurate superpowered person such as Bullseye, Hawkeye, and Moon Knight are sure to deliver death. It turns out Hawkeye has a lot more to do with Moon Knight than you might think. Many of Moon Knight's weapons, including several much more powerful ones, were actually created by a time-traveling Hawkeye. This version of Hawkeye created special weapons in ancient Egypt, which were then imbued with the powers of the gods. His scarab darts are just one of the many gifts this Hawkeye would give him. Shaped like Egyptian scarabs, these projectile weapons rarely missed and were extremely sharp. They essentially serve the same purpose as all other sharp things one would throw, but these are imbued with godlike power. It's a good thing Moon Knight decided to join up and go west coast with some of Earth's mightiest heroes. Moon Knight really is just trying to take every weapon who both Marvel and DC characters make their name off of. Chalk Captain Boomerang up on that list. Another weapon created by Hawkeye and imbued with the power of the Egyptian gods is the Ivory Boomerang. No, I said Boomerang, not Batarang. Another weapon with which Mark Spector is extremely accurate, and better than some darts, blades, and throwing crescents, this one comes back. I always like to picture the part of the post fight they don't show you, where Moon Knight has to go collect all the darts he just used to take people out. Not necessary with the Ivory Boomerang. One of Moon Knight's most reliable and surprisingly devastating weapons is his grapple. Now depending on the version you read, this weapon can appear in several different ways. For example, early on it appeared as a lasso with an axe tied to the end of it. More recently it has been a metal chain with a metal hook. Regardless, he uses it to swing from building to building in the night when fighting crime. I really promise he's not Batman. And you'll definitely know this when you see some of the things he has used this grappling hook to do. As we've said, Moon Knight is a deceptively violent character. He has used the hook and attached it to people's faces in order to pull them back to him. And when there was an axe tied to the end of it, well you can imagine all the fun he had with that. Regardless, this is a useful tool and weapon that Mark Spector has also mastered and in the hands of a master fighter like him, it strikes fear into anyone who crosses paths. Moon Knight is no Wolverine or Captain America, but you'll find that he is well versed in rare Marvel medals as well. You'll see that he has weapons made out of it, but his greatest trick is being able to render Vibranium, one of the world's strongest metals, utterly useless. Moon Knight has a device called an anti-metal pulse. This creates a vibration wave that counteracts the effects of Vibranium. Picture a handheld device like the large Wakandan train tracks where Killmonger and T'Challa had their final fight. In the MCU, Shuri's handheld Panther Blasters showed this capability for a brief moment when she took on Killmonger by herself. So one well-placed anti-metal pulse and Moon Knight could punch straight through the iconic shield of Captain America. Another one of Moon Knight's go-to weapons is his bow staff. This pairs very well with the martial arts styles that Mark Spector tends to employ. His bow staff can actually be stored comfortably in his suit and extend out. It also has a magnetic pulse inside that allows Moon Knight to recall his bow staff should he ever be parted from it. In some versions, the bow staff is equipped with sharp blades, or some of the weapons already described like a stun gun. It is approximately 5 feet long, collapsible, and made of a silver alloy that works against bank robbers and werewolves alike. Moon Knight's suit is actually one of the most deceitfully impressive among Marvel heroes, and you don't even need to include his utility belt stacked with many of the weapons we've already talked about. Moon Knight's suit was originally made from Kevlar from his days as a marine. This was strong enough, but eventually he upgraded the material to a metal that many believe to be adamantium. It was actually made of carbonadium, which was nearly as strong as adamantium, but much lighter and quicker. 
It comes equipped with a glider cape that helps him make quick getaways off of tall buildings and conveniently makes the shape of his logo in the sky. Moon Knight's suit has also at various times included weapons like built-in blades, flashlights, lasers, and even web shooters like Spider-Man. Overall, the guy's suit is not only one of the coolest looking, but it's useful as well. Imagine having a quick getaway from any situation. Equipped with machine guns, Moon Knight has a small personal flying device called an Angel Wing Glider. It's very similar to the glider used by the Green Goblin and can hone into Mark Spector's location from anywhere. It gives Moon Knight the power of individual flight, as useful as characters like Iron Man and Thor. He has used it to escape from and surprise attack several villains through his time of vigilantism. Oh, the things money can buy. You better believe if I had a personal fortune, this would probably be the first investment I make. As stated, Mark Spector is a very wealthy individual. And what kind of super wealthy, definitely not Batman superhero would be complete without an impressive main mode of transportation? Moon Knight has his Mooncopter. Made from a repurposed Quinjet and shaped like, you guessed it, a crescent moon, the Mooncopter is often Mark's go-to choice for escape and transportation. It comes with a ladder and does not even need to land for him to board it. Most importantly, it's outfitted with machine guns and can win just about any dogfight other flying vehicles try to start with it. It is often piloted by his friend Duchamp, but serves as a useful resource for a vigilante of the night. Okay, even I'm starting to think that Bruce Wayne and Batman might just be some more unknown personalities of Mark Spector. Every great superhero needs a guy in the chair. There's Ned Leeds, Benji from Mission Impossible, kinda Taika Waititi's character in Green Lantern. Oh, duh, Alfred. They all assist the main hero from a much safer location. A really great guy in the chair not only assists in battle, but often provides the hero with some incredible weapons to help assist them. For Mark Spector, aka Moon Knight, that guy in the chair is a man by the name of Buck Lyon. Well, actually, it's usually Jean-Paul Duchamp, but sometimes it's Buck. Buck is actually responsible for making some of the other weapons on this very list. However, one of his most impressive feats of technology was an energy shield that he made for Moon Knight to protect himself. He modeled it after Captain America's energy shield that could be seen through, but would stop even explosions from hurting whoever was behind it. Wakandans have used this technology in the MCU for decades, so to think that Moon Knight couldn't stumble upon this same thing is a bit misguided. In a world of swords, sometimes a great shield will give you a leg up. Just ask Steve Rogers. Moon Knight's most well-known and versatile weapon is his truncheon. Made of vibranium sometimes and adamantium others, this multifaceted billy club is a lot more than meets the eye. First of all, being made from some of the most impressive metals in the universe would likely knock anyone out with one swing. The truncheon was an upgrade that really serves the purpose of most of the weapons we have mentioned already. It has a bayonet knife slot, a grappling hook, and extends into nunchucks. Overall, this one weapon outmoded several others that Moon Knight frequently used, and is made of better and much more damage-inducing material. The Golden Ankh is a very unique piece of weaponry, given to Mark Spector directly from the Egyptian gods whose name he fights in. It serves a multitude of uses. One of the coolest is one that all Lord of the Rings fans will recognize. The Golden Ankh is an Egyptian symbol that glows bright to warn Moon Knight anytime danger is near. So basically what I'm trying to say is that Frodo Baggins with Sting and Mark Spector are the same. And they should fight. That or an unknown personality of Mark is a hairy-footed hobbit from the Shire. Regardless, the Golden Ankh is one of the best examples of an artifact given to Moon Knight. The Ankh also serves as a source of knowledge. When combined with some other artifacts, it gives the holder the knowledge to travel through time. Beyond its warning and time powers, it also serves as a useful club and projectile weapon. So if you're a bad guy, not only will the Golden Ankh tell Moon Knight you're coming, but then he'll probably throw it at you. One of the biggest questions to come out of the first episode of Moon Knight was what is likely to serve as the show's MacGuffin. Both Mark Spector and Arthur Harrow are after it for their respective gods, with poor Stephen Grant stuck in the middle. This scarab from the comics is actually an extremely powerful artifact that may hint at Moon Knight getting into some time travel shenanigans. The scarab has the power to literally chew through time. Moon Knight once used the scarab to escape from Kang the Conqueror, frightening even the time traveling master just by using it. We have already seen what the manipulation of time can do in the MCU. It has helped defeat Thanos, Dormammu, and allowed characters like Captain America to go back and live the life they always wanted. Needless to say, combining the Scarab and the Golden Ankh makes Moon Knight a manipulator of time, which is just about the strongest power you can have. Whether he is traveling through time or just simply beating the snot out of someone, Moon Knight's arsenal of weaponry is one of the most impressive seen in Marvel Comics. Which of Moon Knight's weapons do you think is the most powerful? Answer for each of your personalities. 